Am I the butthole for canceling the babysitter after my wife decided not to attend my work holiday party? Posted by Watch the Kid Seda. My 38-year-old male work held our annual holiday party last Friday. It was held at one of those axe-throwing places which I had never done before, so I figured it would be pretty fun. My wife, 36-year-old female, and I have three kids, 10, 8, and 5, so we don't get out of the house for dates very often. The holiday party was planned almost two months ago, and my wife agreed to attend with me. I suggested we make it more of a date by either going out for drinks after the party or catching a late-night movie. She thought this was a good idea too. I also arranged for a babysitter to come watch the kids for that night. The day of the party my wife got home from work and told me that she had a horrible day and was in a bad space mentally, so she didn't want to come to the party. I told her I was disappointed but I understand if she wants to stay home. As I was getting myself ready to head to the party, I called the babysitter and cancelled. I apologized to her and offered to Venmo her an hour's worth of our agreed rate, $30, to compensate for the cancellation, and she agreed that was reasonable. As I was getting ready to leave, my wife asked when the babysitter was going to come. I kind of looked at her funny and told her I had just cancelled the babysitter because she was no longer coming with me. She got mad at me and told me that I knew she had a bad day and was in a bad mental state and needed some time to herself. I told her that I had assumed none of that meant she was incapable of watching our kids and that I didn't think having the babysitter come when my wife was still home made any sense at all. She told me to call her back and see if she could still come watch the kids and I told her that if she wanted to do that she can do it, but I am not going to. She tried to argue with me about it, but I told her that I had to leave for the party. While I was at the party, she sent me multiple texts about how the kids were driving her nuts, and that the babysitter didn't answer her calls, and she needed me to come home. She kept blowing up my phone and I eventually left the party over an hour early to go home. When I got there, she kept arguing with me about how I was in butthole for canceling the babysitter when I knew she had a rough day. I told her I was not going to pay a babysitter just so that my wife can rest after a bad day. I told her she could have just thrown a movie on for the kids and relaxed. I told her she was the one who ruined our potential night out, and that having a bad day at work is not a good enough reason to pay a babysitter $150, $200. She still thinks I was in butthole for canceling the babysitter without talking to her first and she's still mad at me for it. But I don't think that was an unreasonable assumption to make considering that there have been plenty of times when I've had a bad day and I am still 100% capable of watching the kids by myself while my wife leaves the house. Edit. Hey everyone, can we cool it with a purely speculative cheating angle? My wife goes to yoga class with five other moms from our neighborhood. So unless they are all stepping out on their husbands or all in cahoots together, she's not cheating. Our neighborhood isn't a reality TV show and real life isn't like that. She's an introvert and when she gets to her social limit, she doesn't want to go out. It's happened before which is why I didn't push her to come out with me. Here is my AI opinion. First of all, I think you are a good husband and father. You planned a nice date night for your wife, and you were understanding when she told you that she had a bad day and didn't want to go out. Canceling the babysitter was the right thing to do in this situation, as it would have been unfair to pay someone to watch the kids while your wife was not in the mood to spend time with you. However, I think there are a few things that you could have done differently to avoid the argument that ensued. 1. Communicate with your wife more clearly. When your wife told you that she had a bad day and didn't want to go out, you should have asked her if she wanted you to come home and spend time with her instead of canceling the babysitter. This would have allowed her to still have some alone time while also giving her the option to spend time with you if she wanted to. 2. Be more understanding. While it's understandable that you were disappointed about the canceled plans, you could have been more understanding of your wife's situation. Instead of getting defensive and arguing with her, you could have listened to her and tried to find a solution that worked for both of you. 3. Avoid assumptions. It's important to avoid making assumptions about your wife's behavior or intentions. Instead of assuming that she was trying to ruin your plans or that she was cheating on you, you could have talked to her openly and honestly about what was going on. This would have helped to clear up any misunderstandings and prevented the argument from escalating. Overall, I think that you and your wife need to communicate more openly and honestly with each other. By doing so, you can avoid misunderstandings and find solutions that work for both of you. 
Was the OP unreasonable in canceling the babysitter without discussing it with his wife first? Did the OP's wife overreact to the situation? To your listener, if you want more of this content, please consider subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. Thank you for your consideration. A comment from Delicious Baker 8335. Not the butthole. No sane person's going to spend $200 for a babysitter when a parent is actually home. She didn't have to take care of the kids. Based on their ages, she could have made it a movie night or put their favorite shows on while she relaxed. My guess is she had other plans she didn't want you to know about and got upset because you cancelled the babysitter, which is a super reasonable thing to do since she's staying home. The fact she got so heated about it is odd. Who makes plans for a date night, a work party, then decide last minute not to go because they had a bad day? That's pretty rude. The fact she just assumed you'd keep the babysitter despite your plans changing is weird and should be talked about. Diamond Bronze likes to add a Not the butthole. Why pay for a babysitter if she's home? They're old enough to entertain themselves. If mom says, guys, I'm too tired to be running around tonight dealing with messes, if I order pizza and put a movie on, you have to promise to be quiet and leave me alone. Basically, she's allowed to act like an adult and reason with her kids. $200 for a babysitter and she has the guts to be weird at you when she cancelled something you were looking forward to last minute. She's the butthole. Am I the butthole for forcing a sale of my late husband and his girlfriend's home? Posted by Outrageous Hat. 7. This has caused a lot of mixed reactions, and I want unbiased opinion. Neither me, nor my late husband and his girlfriend have any children. I 35-year-old female, got separated from my husband, 37-year-old male, over 10 years ago. Unfortunately, he has left me with a lot of debt to pay, and in a position where I was nearly homeless. I have only stopped paying the debt off two years ago, but there is still a lot of work to improve my credit history. Because of all the stress he caused me, we never got divorced or formally separated. A matter of fact is we never spoke after I was kicked out from the flat, so his girlfriend Anna can move in. I was planning to file for divorce once I have enough spare income, but some events took place before I was able to do so. Now to where I can be in butthole. Two months ago my husband passed away in a freak accident. He left no will behind and has a house which is paid off with his girlfriend. He ended up having a big promotion at work. I have spoken to the lawyer and because we never divorced or filed for separation, I am entitled to half of the house as his next to kin. Last week, I have informed Anna through a letter that I want the house to be sold. She can either buy my half or I will have to force a sale, it is up to her. I do not want to live in the house, but the money from the sale could really help out to sort out the damage done by the loans I had to pay for the ex, as well as a deposit for my own place, so I don't have to live in absolute shitholes due to poor credit, not a very high paying job. It will also help me to work on my qualifications so I can get a better job in retirement. However, Anna and my ex's family have called me a massive butthole, saying I have no right to the house, legally I do, and that I am being cruel and vindictive. I have have reminded them that it is not my fault their son haven't divorced me or had a will, and said I don't see how it is unfair as I had to pay for his debts while he lived a comfy life. So Reddit am I the butthole? Edit, I have seen this coming up as a question a few times and don't want to keep responding with the same comment. My ex has maxed out my credit cards and took loans in my name as well as cleared our savings account to fund his relationship with Anna and some of his gambling habits at the time. Due to being busy with work I haven't discovered the loans and cards being maxed out until it was too late and I had a few notices of non-payment and him kicking me out and basically making it seem to everyone that I had the problem and he loaned me money which I paid him back by taking loans and cards as well as if I wanted him back, so mad him gifts. The total amount of debt is a bit over 50k, which also resulted in me losing my job while he got to keep his well-paid job. Regarding the house, both Anna and my ex are on the deeds and had joint mortgage from what I was told, so legally she's entitled to the other half of the house. Here is my AI opinion. First of all, I think you have every right to be upset with your ex-husband for leaving you with a lot of debt and not taking responsibility for it. It's understandable that you would want to make sure you are financially secure before moving on with your life. Regarding the house, it is true that you have a legal claim to half of the property as his next of kin. However, I think it would be best to try to come to an agreement with Anna and your ex's family rather than forcing a sale. It's understandable that they may feel upset or angry about the situation, 
but taking a confrontational approach is unlikely to help resolve the issue. I would suggest talking to a mediator or a lawyer who specializes in family law to help you navigate the situation and find a resolution that works for everyone involved. It's important to remember that you have every right to your ex-husband's assets, but it's also important to consider the feelings of his current partner and her rights as well. Additionally, I would recommend taking steps to improve your credit history and financial situation as soon as possible. This will not only help you in this situation but also in the long run for your future financial goals. Lastly, please take care of yourself during this difficult time. Losing a loved one is never easy and it's okay to feel upset and overwhelmed. Make sure to reach out to friends, family, or a therapist if you need support. Is it fair for the OP to want to sell the house and split the profits? Does the OP have a legal right to half of the house? Discount Mithril commented. Not the bottle. You owe nothing to her. Sell the house and be done with it. Also stop paying his debts if they are not also your debts. By paying them, some companies can assume you are admitting to the debts as your own. They will try to get you to pay, but you should fight it if you can. And why only half? If you have no children, shouldn't you be getting the whole house as next of kin? OP replied. Him and Anna had joint mortgage, so she is also entitled to half. That is all for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day and hopefully I see you soon.